Hi and welcome back to a new video, again another hardware launch. Today it's going to be the RTX 4080. We will compare the 4080 Strix with the 4090 Strix because it's quite convenient that both cards are almost identical. They have the same PCB layout. There are some differences in the face configuration. We will get to that at the end of the video. But the PCB itself is identical and also the cooler is the same, which makes the direct comparison quite convenient because we have the same cooling capabilities. Overall speaking, the 4080 is about 25 to 35 percent faster in my testing compared to a 3080 Ti while having roughly the same power consumption, sometimes even a little bit lower power consumption. We're going to do gaming benchmarks, also synthetic benchmarks, and also obviously talk about the power consumption and efficiency. We are starting our benchmarks today again as usual with Times by Extreme GT1 representing a synthetic load. The RTX 4080 as expected will definitely beat RTX 30 gen and also RX 6000 gen by AMD but it will be about 25% behind an RTX 4090 in this DirectX 12 4K benchmark. This still means though that it will beat the RTX 30 Ti by 40%. Jumping into gaming benchmarks with Battlefield 2042. Again, 4K resolution because that's just perfect in combination with the RTX 40 Gen. Identical to the RTX 4090 launch, you will see the gaming benchmarks with average FPS, minimum FPS, aka 1% lows, and at the same time always the power consumption. The power consumption will be listed in blue in the charts. On average, the power consumption of the 4080 is also going to be lower than what it's typically rated for. That's what you can see with the 4080 Strix right here. That's what you can see with the 4080 Strix right here. The power consumption in gaming with about 270 watt is 13% behind an RTX 3080 Ti and thus also 70 watt below the TGP. But at the same time, the performance will be about 26% above a 3080 Ti and only 23% behind an RTX 4090. Also comparing with the 4090 power consumption, the power consumption is going to be about 14% lower. In all the gaming benchmarks, we also performed additional testing at a reduced power target of 70%. That's what we figured out during the RTX 4090 testing, that all the cards will just run much more efficient. And now with the ASUS RTX 4080 Strix, we did the same testing with 70% and you will see that on average we are losing about 2% of performance. But at the same time, the power consumption is reduced by 15%. But to be fair, we also have to point out that the minimum FPS are definitely suffering here and a bit more than 2% because we can see a reduction of 8% in the minimum FPS. And now looking at the chart which shows FPS per watt, we can see an interesting picture of 4080 and 4090 because both are pretty much identical. With 0.39 and 0.40, both cards are exactly in the same region, which is quite obscure and also quite rare because Previously, if you would compare a high-end card, let's say a 3080 Ti to a 3090 Ti, the gap, the efficiency gap between the high-end card and the card below would be much bigger. But here it's pretty much identical. However, if we reduce the power target of the RTX 4090 to 70%, we can see that it runs about 5% more efficient than the 4080, which is also quite interesting. And the 4090 with the reduced power target will be on top of the chart with 0.46 FPS per watt. And because it's still personally my favorite game, still going to include PUBG into these charts. And you can see the RTX 4080 will beat a 3080 Ti by about 25% when it comes to additional performance. But it also draws a bit more power by about 11%. However, if we compare it to a 3090 Ti, we can see a good reduction in power consumption by about 25% while having additional performance of about 8%. But this is just because the 3090 Ti was an extremely inefficient card. Again here with reduced power target to 70%, we will lose 8% in performance and the card will only draw about 243 watt under load. That means a reduction of power consumption by 30%. Overall, our testing results are similar to Remnant from the Ashes. The power consumption of the 4080 Strix will be at about 300 watt and on par with a 3080 Ti. 
but at the same time the performance is increased by 26%. I also noticed something extremely interesting while testing Remnant from the Ashes with the 4090 at the reduced power target of 70%. Because you can see that with this setting it's actually possible with the 4090 to draw less power than a 4080. But at the same time, you will have an increase of average FPS by 16% and an increase of minimum FPS by 7%. That means you will have less power draw, but more performance with the 4090. If we do the same kind of modification to the 4080 with 70% power target, we can still see very good potential for efficiency increase. Because we can reduce the power consumption by 20% while only losing 3% in performance. Translating all of this testing again into an FPS per watt chart, we can see a drastic increase in efficiency from the RTX 30 to RTX 40 gen. But you can also see that there is pretty much no difference between the 4080 and the 4090 when it comes to raw efficiency. And that's the same for 100% power target and also the optimized power target of 70%. Because we already had extensive testing on DLSS 3 with the RTX 4090 launch, I'm not going to repeat everything again, but we're just going to look at two of the titles again. Starting with Cyberpunk and setting DLSS 3 to performance, we can see a performance increase by 200%, which is also definitely necessary. Because even if you are now running Cyberpunk with either the 4080 or the 4090, and you use 4K Ultra settings without DLSS, you will only have like 30 to 40 FPS. And at least to me personally, that's not a region where I would enjoy the gaming experience. And during the 4090 testing, we already saw a decrease in power consumption while using DLSS 3. And it's the same again with the 4080. And it can probably just be explained because DLSS 3 will render in a lower resolution while running performance and thus reduces the power consumption. In a Plague Tale Requiem again in 4K resolution and max settings, we could observe a performance increase by 150% while running DLSS 3, which also reduces power again by about 10% to 304 watt. In conclusion, the 4080 will beat a 3080 Ti by about 25 to 40% in my testing. It's also about 20 to 30% slower than a 4090, but it also consumes 20 to 30% less power than a 4090. Now it's time to get to the 4080 Strix specifically. And even though it's using the same cooler, same PCB layout as the 4090, I noticed something quite annoying while gaming. And we will start this, for example, with Remnant from the Ashes. Just in this scene, we have about maybe 100 to 120 FPS. And now, Check this out, and I hope you can hear it while I'm pointing my microphone at it. I have no idea why that's the case, and if that's just the case for my individual 4080 Strix, but this card has a very annoying coil wine like a huge amount of coil wine. And not only at very high FPS, because that's something, if you are sitting in a game menu where you can see maybe, I don't know, 500 or like a thousand FPS, I can live with it. But this card, even in a scene which you just saw now, like at 100 FPS, you can, you can clearly hear it, like much more than you could hear with the 4090. To be honest, with the 4090 Strix, I did not really hear any kind of coil wine, and it's supposed to use the same cooler and PCB, so what's the difference? Then I checked, I just looked inside and I spotted some differences. And that's why we definitely have to open the card. That's what I could see looking on the side of the card. You can see that there are some SMD spots and they are just not populated. Those should be places for inductors. And if we simply inspect the PCBs of the 4080 and 4090, you can see differences in the area of the GPU. So there will be much more components in the 4090 back area. We have more caps and also like the traces here, the fine ones that are the PCI Express lanes. There's some differences there, but that's just because we have different GPUs. But all the rest, like this area here, this entire area, the area on the back, you have exactly the same components placed there. So it's not 100% the identical PCB, but the base should be the same for both of them. It's basically a 4090 PCB with some small adjustments. And inspecting the cooler itself, you can see it's 
pretty much the same. It's definitely the same base. There's a small difference just in the area here because the 4080 has less memory ICs and there is an additional spot on the 4090 right here. But that's just an additional plate that's soldered on and it just makes sense that you would use the same cooler base and just don't do this modification on the 4080 block. But apart from that, I mean, that's a great thing to have. That's a very positive thing that the 4080 cooler is the same as the 4090 because we already did a good amount of videos on the 4090 Strix and the cooler is able to dissipate a lot of heat, like a lot of heat. 600 watt, no problem. And with the 4080 consuming less power, it's definitely a good thing. It will just keep the card more quiet and cool. Now looking at the front side of the PCBs, you can see that they are clearly different. And that's also much more different from what I first assumed. It's also the first time that I'm opening up the card now because I wanted to first complete all the testing with like temperatures and everything. You just want to make sure that it's stock condition. That's why it was uh, like more wild guess first. But we can see that six phases in total are not populated on the 4080. And also looking at the power stages in detail, we can see that on the 4090 Strix, they used the on semi like 3170 power stages rated at 70 amps. Those are also rated at 70 amps. Those are the same power stages ASUS used on the 3080 Strix. Those are Infineon, TDA 21570 and as I said before also rated at 70 amps. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why they did not use these because at least just looking at the 4090 Strix, the card was great. The card was awesome for me. No coil wine, like almost no coil wine at all. And on this card, I have significant coil wine. But I'm not sure if it's due to the fact that it's using just less faces overall or because it's using different components itself. It's just not possible for me to find out. Now we are taking a look at clocks, voltages, power consumption, whatever. I ran the game for 30 minutes and tracked all the values with GPU-C. As you can see, the GPU clock is just insanely stable. It will always boost to 2880 megahertz on this particular sample, while the GPU temperature always stays below 60 degrees Celsius. And that's just defined by the temperature target for the fan control, because if you would go higher in temperature or you would have a higher room temperature, for example, you would just see a higher fan speed, at least slightly. For me, the fan speed is constant at 1200 RPM which is definitely a very enjoyable fan speed. It's almost not possible to hear the fans. Power draw also constantly, as we already talked about, during gaming about 300 watt under load. Board power draw, that's what you can also see with TDP. Voltage constantly 1.07 volt. Talking about the RTX 4080 Strix in particular, there are some positive aspects about the card, starting off with the cooler, which is basically the 4090 cooler, capable of dissipating 600 watt while the card consumes half. That means the fan speed is going to be very low, temperatures are going to be great, card is going to be quiet, but only from a cooler perspective. And then we have the coil wine. And I cannot remember in the previous years that I had a card which was so annoying like, like this card. I'm not sure why that's the case, but I, when I was testing the card, like on this test bench and I was sitting on my other PC with my headset on, I could still hear the coil whine from the benchmarking. It's insane how much coil whine this card has. I would definitely not buy this card. I would not buy this card because the coil whine is just, it's just way too much. And at very low FPS, as I said, like even at 80 or 100 FPS, you can clearly hear it. And at like 300, 400, it's going to be much worse than this. I'm not sure if it's just this single sample that behaves like that, but for me, that's a no-go. In the next days, probably tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we will do two more videos about the Gigabyte card and also a Paylet card. All right. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.